Hey Folkies, Emily Valken here and in this video I'm gonna talk about how to upgrade your bow. So this is gonna be very very bow related, very bow specific. I'm sorry for people who don't play bowed instruments. Uh, basically why are you talking about bows and how to upgrade them? Because bows are crucial when you play a bowed instrument. It's not just a decorative part of the instrument that you brush on the strings, but it's actually where you create your sound, so it's really really crucial. And um, I have seen many bow problems around and I would like to help you fix it to have a better quality. Uh, quality of bow, basically. As I like to say, it's hard to have a good result when you have bad tools, so it's really hard to get a good sound if you have a bad bow. So I'm gonna go through some tips about how to upgrade your bow. And some are just very basic, very beginner stuff. And some are more specific and I'm also gonna give some addresses for Nickel Harpa bows especially. So, first time I want to talk about, uh, first time, first thing I want to talk about is rosin. So there are tons of types of rosins, I'm not gonna go through them because there are too many. But basically what type of rosin you're gonna use depends first on the instrument you're playing. Usually the deeper the instrument, the darker the rosin. And when you have an upper regi register, you have a lighter rosin. So violin more like golden rosin and cello more like uh, brown rosin. Um, but it depends also on your taste. There are fiddlers playing with brown rosin, so depends a bit. So second parameter, your taste and your playing style, depending if you want more bright sound or more grip or more texture and so on. And what fits better with your playing style. And then this is maybe less important, but your climate. You need a rosin that is adapted to your climate, that is not gonna melt, for example. Some brands have a winter rosin and a summer rosin and stuff like that. And a little fourth category is if you are allergic, you need a synthetic rosin so you don't have uh, allergies when you play because of your rosin. So how to choose between all the, like what is available on the market of rosins? My first tip would be ask people who play the same instrument as you and with a similar technique, who you like the sound of, ask them what rosin they're using because that can be a good starting point. I am personally using Bernardel, a golden rosin. I have tried other ones, Hiddersin, Melos, I like them as well, but Bernadelle is my favorite one. So I use it on Fiddle, Octe Fiddle, Nickel Harpa and Rebecca. So it's my, my rosin, in a way. Not saying it's the best, absolutely best. Uh, it's just for me, the one I prefer. Um, basically, if you have time and energy to put into that, it's a really interesting thing to do to try different rosins. So you will have to clean your bow hair in between every rosin if you want to have a pure test in a way. To do that you use alcohol uh, 90 degrees on the hair, careful not on the wood, it can damage it. So you clean the hair and then you put the new rosin on and you try. Um, what I recommend if you want to try different rosins is to team up with other people playing the same instrument who also want to try different rosins. So you don't have to buy tons of rosins yourself, because it's, this is going to be expensive, but you can actually pass them on, the different brands, and try them. And also you have people to exchange with, and it's very interesting to hear their experience and like match it with yours or, or not, basically. Exchange about that. So that's about rosin. Um, but rosin is only the tip of the iceberg of bow stuff. Basically, a second tip I want to go through is when your bow is starting to feel very slippery, like it's not really gripping the string, no matter how much rosin you put on, but it's like sliding more than anything and the sound gets weak. This is very probably because you need to get a new hair on your bow. So this might sound very obvious to people who know about it, but I have also seen people who have played with the same hair on their bow for 10 years and they don't know why it's getting difficult to play with. Basically, the bow hair, so horse hair, is exactly like your own hair. It has little scales that are sticking out. You can't see them, but they are there. And they are like scratching the string with the help of rosin. And that's what makes the sound, the grip, basically. And with time, those little scales get worn out until they are totally flat and until the hair is really smooth and is sliding and not gripping anymore. So, um, then you need to replace the hair. How often? 
classical players who play every day and a lot and professionals and so on say it's maybe once a year. I am personally a bad student for that <laughs> because I change maybe every third year or something. I should probably change more, but just so you have an idea. But it's more about the feeling of your bow than about like how long it has been before you like since you last changed the hair. So it's more to feel it in your in your bow. So you go to your bow maker or instrument maker and you ask for new hair. Here's, there is a little tip um, for Nickel Hapa players. This comes from Olof Johansson. I don't exactly know why he says that. I haven't exactly understood like the physical reason for it. But if he recommends that, I totally trust him because he has tried so many things about bows and so on and Nickel Harpa and he knows about that. He says that Nickel Harpa bows should have a little less hair at the frog than violin bows. So uh, violin bows usually they have maybe one centimeter wide and Nickel Harpa, hair, like Nickel Harpa bows should have seven or eight millimeters wide. So you can tell that to the person who is gonna put new hair on your bow. It's gonna sound better, according to Olaf. Uh, when you get your back, your bow back from the person who has changed the hair, the hair usually doesn't have any rosin in on, and it's a bit hard to put new rosin on the hair because it doesn't really want to stick there. Uh, one trick that is used by pros that is really helping is to collect the crumbles and the powder that come from the little broken parts of your rosin patch, and put it in a fabric, piece of fabric, and just rub your bow hair inside. It's gonna help. It's gonna make it quicker. So that's just a little trick. There are many other things you can do to improve your bow itself. Some people, for example, want more weight at the tip, so they put a bit of like a middle piece or something. Different things that you do. But at some point, there's a limit, like how much you can improve an already existing bow. Sometimes you just have to go to my third point that I want third point that I want to talk about today. It is to change your bow. Basically, before thinking about getting a new instrument because you want to upgrade your sound, think about getting a new bow. It is less expensive, it is less of a deal, and also usually we are less attached to the bow as much as we are to the instrument. So I re highly recommend if you want to have a better sound, if you are not happy with your sound, get a better bow. It's probably a good good thing to do. Um, here I would recommend you basically to try many different bows. So go to people and ask if you can try their bow for maybe a few minutes or even like a few days. You can probably go to a bow maker and ask, can I borrow some bows uh, from you for two weeks and try them? And if one is really my taste, I will buy it. Usually you can do that for free or for just very little money. So it's a good way to try different things. Basically, why I'm saying that is because you need to know what you want and also you need to know how good or not good your previous bow was. For me, for example, on the fiddle, I was playing with classical bows. I had two very good bows, but I was not really satisfied with how it felt in my hand. And when I tried a baroque bow, it was a blast. It was a revelation. Baroque bow is what is best for my style of playing and my taste. And I would not have known that if I, not, if I haven't tried different uh, bows from different people. So I'm not saying baroque bow is the best thing to have. It's just, for me, trying different bows and help me find what I needed. For violin, viola, cello and double bass, so the quatuor, I have a recommendation for you. When you think about getting a new bow, if you are a bit short on, on money, go for carbon fiber and not for wooden bow. I know I'm the person always saying, you should get natural materials, but not this time. And here is why. For the same low price, you can have a very shitty wooden bow or a pretty decent to even good carbon fiber bow. This is just because carbon fiber is much cheaper than wooden bow. For example, I have a violin bow, which is uh, 140 euros, something like that. And it's actually a good bow, much better than what I could have for the same price in wood. So there is no pride in having a wooden bow. There's no shame in having a carbon fiber bow. 
if money is a parameter, definitely go for carbon fiber. You want better quality, basically. If money is no problem, go for wooden. But carbon fiber also has two good sides. The first one is that it's very solid. It's never gonna break, kinda. And also you won't have problems with customs. So if you're traveling a lot, and I think especially in America, uh, Pernambuco wood can get difficult with customs. There are speci specific regulations. There is none on carbon fiber bones. So this is also a good thing to know. And now I want to talk about nickel harbor bows. Because I've seen so many shitty nickel harbor bows out there. I, it really makes me sad because sometimes it really takes down the sound of people who actually play correctly, play good. A uh, little story, one of my nickel harbor students in one of my workshops could not play one of the exercises I was giving them. She just could not. She didn't work. And I was like, please try again with my bow. And she tried, and suddenly she could play the technique much better, like with no problem, and she sounded really much better. So her bow was too bad to allow her go to her full potential, basically. And I think this is really sad when it happens, when your tools are taking you down. So try bows, if you're Nikapa players, and consider getting a better one. There are many shitty Nicaragua bows, and I think it's a lot because Nicaragua builders, they build the instrument, and they build a simple easy bow with it, and they sell it with the instrument. And those bows, they work, but they are very limit, limit, limited, limited? I don't know. Um, and they are nothing compared to a decent or even good Nicaragua bow. So now I'm gonna talk about four addresses that I know uh, I recommend myself. There are probably many more, but this is where I know you can get good Nicole Harper bows. First one is Jean-Claude Condy, the French Nicole Harper builder. He builds bows, this kind of bows. Um, they are kind of well known in the Nicole Harper world. They are extremely good. He has different models. This one is the one that he developed together with all of Johansson and it's the best one. It's also the most expensive one. I think it's model 4 or something. And it's expensive, 600 euros or more, something like that. Also, Jean-Claude is very busy, so the waiting time is very long. He's also quite bad at answering to emails, especially if it's not in French, so it's a bit complicated, but time and money are totally worth it. Those bows are amazing. Um, another builder that I have heard of and played with some bows um, is Aurélie Georges. I think she's from France and based in France, but I'm not fully sure. I have not met her personally, but have tried one of her bows. So it's the Baroque type bows, so the tip is Baroque, Baroque tip, like that. And they're amazing. When I tried a bow from her, I was totally impressed. I wanted to buy the bow right away, even if I didn't need it. Um, I guess price and time, like waiting time, are pretty similar to the Jean-Claude bows, to the Condi bows, kind of. Emilia Amper recommends her bows, so that's a good sign. Then a bit less expensive in Sweden, in Jävle, a bit north of Stockholm, there is the bow studio, Stroke Studio. And as the name is telling you, uh, it's a place for bows, so not only the Kappa bows, but all other types of bows, it's a really good place to go if you're in Nievla to try different bows and maybe buy a new one. Also Mikael Valmo, who is the owner, is really helping, really friendly, he will help you choose and so on. I don't have a Nickel Harpa bow from there, but Niklas Hrosval has his own one from there. It's also a Baroque type bow and I think Niklas Hrosval is a good reference. I have my fiddle, Baroque fiddle bow from there and I'm really really happy about it. And now you're probably thinking, ah, Emily, that's nice, but you're talking about very expensive bows and I don't have much money, which I totally understand. <laughs> Good news, there is on the German webshop Thomann, there is a Nickel Harpa bow. So it's just labeled Nickel Harpa bow and it's from Geva. It's between 85 and 100 euros. It's kind of rough, it's like Baroque type. It's rough, it's not fancy. But it's actually very good. I borrowed one and then I bought one because they are really, really good bows. For this price, I think they are the best ones out there. 
I mean, a bow under 100 euros, this is nothing. And it's really decent. It allows you to do all techniques. It's solid. I really like them. Of course, it's nothing compared to the great, great bows, but I mean, it's good. I think there is no excuse to have a creepy Nickel Harper bow when the Geva bow exists. And uh, so if you have a crappy Nick Harper bow and you don't have much money, just go for the Toman bow, it's really good. And I promise I don't have any partnership with Toman for telling you that. I'm just generally impressed by the quality of those bows. So this is all for today, folks. I hope this helped you. I hope you got some interesting information. Uh, of course, if you have better addresses or more tips or something, please share. Also, if you have questions, suggestions or anything, please write to me. Nerdy questions! I love that. I promise that next video is not going to be just me talking, but it's going to be about playing stuff, more playing technique. But until then, I hope you will take good care of yourself, of your bow, and see you next time. Hey, Dora!